Hi, my name is Mohammed. I'm one of the pharmacists that works in the pain team and today I'm going to talk to you about uh, an important topic around sleep and medication. Now, as we know, sleep is one of the most uh, commonly reported side effects of medication and also illicit drugs. And so it's very important that if you do have uh, any of these side effects, then you discuss them with a healthcare professional so that we can look into this in more detail with you. Um, now, excessive sleepiness can be caused by the sedating effects of um, prescription-based medication, but also non-prescription medication, which we often buy uh, in over-the-counter remedies. Um, sleep is a complex biological process and so sometimes it's difficult to say exactly what's causing um, the effect on the sleep, whether that's part of the diet or a habit of the person or indeed a medication. Now we knew, know from science that uh, some of the chemicals that are involved in um, regulating sleep patterns such as um, dopamine, adrenaline, noradrenaline, serotonin, histamine, glutamate and acetylcholine. These are just some of the names of neurotransmitters that we know um, can regulate sleep and also alertness. Now if you experience um, excessive sleepiness especially during the daytime then obviously this can be quite problematic um, it can often lead to falls it can lead to um, difficulty settling into jobs and it can also uh, cause breathing problems as well for people um, often patients who have pain obviously this affects their um, quality of sleep and so the day after they often struggle because uh, as a result of having uh, poor sleep now um, in terms of medications, there are uh, some common medications that we buy over the counter that can affect um, uh, our sleep, but also regular medication which we might be taking for another condition. So these include things like um, beta blockers that we take for high blood pressure or for um, managing anxiety. Um, there are common uh, medications that we use uh, for coughs and colds um, that we again buy over the counter, uh, sometimes get them on prescription as well. Um, so these contain decongestant or sympathomimetics and these can often cause uh, problems with, the, with sleep as well. Um, other medications include things like antihistamines which we often take for hay fever and allergies. Um, other long-term medications for other conditions include things like antidepressants, um, steroids, um, diuretics for heart failure or conditions like that or for managing blood pressure um, and one of the common ones that we often see are things like anticonvulsant medications so things that traditionally we use for um, epilepsy but we now use them for pain so, so things such as gabapentin and pregabalin Additional to this, the big category is the uh, class of drugs that we call opioids or opioid-like medications. So these include over-the-counter remedies such as uh, codeine-based products, but also prescription-only medications and control drugs such as tramadol, morphine, oxycodone, all the way through to buprenorphine and even fentanyl. Now, these often make patients drowsy, especially in the initial phases of using them. But when your body becomes more tolerant to them uh, and you take them for a longer period of time, then often they can cause hormonal changes and chemical changes in the body, which can then uh, affect our quality of sleep. And so often patients report that after long term use of opioids, they get um, nightmares or they get disturbed sleep or um, and, and often they fall asleep during the day, but then struggle to sleep at night. Another type of medication that um, often affects sleep are the antidepressants uh, or medications that we take for uh, anxiety and so one of the common ones that often gets mentioned is a drug called amitriptyline. Uh, now this is an, a, a drug that um, belongs to the class of drugs called um, tricyclic antidepressants. Now sometimes it, for patients who have pain um, we have a bit of a dilemma and that is that they have pain which is uncontrolled throughout the day and, and often that can have an impact on the sleep at night and so they also have fatigue because um, either because of the pain um, or and that just feels like it's draining them all the time but also because they can't get comfortable at night when they're trying to sleep and so these patients mm -hmm. then wake up in the morning and uh, find that they've 
even despite sometimes sleeping for you know many hours or being in the bed for many hours and um, they've not actually had a you know a good quality sleep um, and so it's these kinds of patients that we often uh, use drugs like amitriptyline for now certain doses uh, are what would normally be used for its antidepressant activity but in uh, in a pain setting we often use slightly different doses and so our hope would be or the aim would be that by using a medication like amitriptyline we can have like a double pronged approach so it, we would hope that it would one help with your um sleep um, but also um, help with your pain throughout the day as well now uh, the aim would never be to just um, give you a medication that's going to make you sleepy uh, but the whole purpose of using something like amitriptyline um, is that uh, we know the important link that um, sleep has with uh, chronic pain conditions and so often they go hand in hand and if you try and treat them both or help them both then often that can have better results for patients and so patients often complain that they either find it really difficult to get comfortable to get to sleep uh, or they um, can get to sleep pretty quickly but they can't maintain their sleep so they after one or two hours they'll wake up and then they'll be awake for a while before they finally nod off again and so this cycle will continue and throughout the night they often will wake up several times uh, and before you know it it's the morning and so medications like amitriptyline are, are things that we sometimes use to help initiate sleep and to um, help patients sleep for longer throughout the night without uh, um, being interrupted in their sleep um, but this is one aspect, you know, or the one medication that we, you know, sometimes use, and it's not for everyone, unfortunately. Now, sometimes the um, problems or the potential side effects outweigh that, and so patients, on the other hand, often wake up in the morning and then feel really drowsy sometimes. And many of you watching this video might have experienced this yourself, so it might help you with your sleep initially, but when you wake up in the morning, you've got like a hangover type effect. And so this is really important because it can obviously affect your ability to operate machinery. So driving, for example, if you have to drive to work first thing early in the morning, that can be really difficult. Um, if you have to look after young kids, for example, or um, if you have a, a, a job that requires your, you know, full attention, uh, you know, early in the morning, or you have to go really uh, like an early morning shift, then obviously these, uh, these medications might not be appropriate. So we can often try and mitigate this by reducing the dose or adjusting it slightly, adjusting the timing of the, the medication. So we often say medications like amitriptyline should be taken at least two to three hours before bed. So the time that you would normally get into bed, let's say around 10 o'clock, uh, 10 p.m. in the evening, then we would say taking something like amitriptyline at around 7 o'clock, um, you know, 7, 8 o'clock in the evening would be a good idea. So hopefully that shouldn't make you drowsy straight away. And so by the time you get to bedtime normally, then the medication should have started working by then. And so hopefully that will put you in a good routine for your sleep. Now, if you suspect that you are taking a medication that could potentially be disrupting your sleep, then often it's obviously a good idea to speak with your healthcare professional and uh, first and foremost to probably to your GP as they would have an overview of all your medication that you're taking. Now, they can often uh, change the medication to a different uh, different uh, version or that can still help your condition and um, so there might be other medication uh, in that class that are less likely to cause that side effect often uh, it could be that the medication is no longer needed and so sometimes things like diet changes or lifestyle changes exercise etc might be able to manage your condition uh, whatever that may be and often it can mean that you can come off the medication that you've been on for a long time that might be affecting your sleep the other important point that I wanted to highlight is often these days patients will use medications um, that are herbal remedies or products uh, that they buy from herbal uh, or, or health shops or even online uh, um, they purchase them and often we don't know enough about these medications um, and what long-term effects they can have on the sleep just because there isn't enough data um, to suggest you know otherwise and so we often recommend pay to patients that 
things like lavender um, and chamomile, these kinds of products are often put into tea uh, um, and served as tea bags. And so people often take these, especially at night, and they find that it can help relax them and give them a better quality sleep. I would just say that on this point, I once had a patient that was uh, waking up in the middle of the night and when they couldn't sleep, they um, were taking... Um, a tea based product like this now it contained chamomile or, or lavender or something but when we looked at the 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 breakdown of the product we found that it actually had caffeine inside as well and so it's really important that um if we're taking these products that we take them uh, with the advice of a healthcare professional and we check them properly and that we also check that they're not interacting with any of our regular medication that we um, take as well now the um, final point I'll probably make is that um, any changes that you uh, think might need to be made to your medication then it's really important that we discuss this with either your pharmacist or a practice nurse or your GP uh, and they can guide you and look at all your medication and you can come up with a plan together taking matters into your own hands and deciding which medication is uh, good for your sleep and which medication isn't good for your sleep is probably not a good idea and so um, on that note, uh, I'd like to um, also uh, include about um, medications that patients uh, often use um, for which have an illicit um, and a, a drug abuse potential. So uh, things like cannabis, um, amphetamines, um, you know, marijuana, all these kinds of, of drugs, even caffeine obviously is included in there, nicotine. Uh, and cocaine, all these kinds of medications that patients often uh, abuse and people abuse uh, on the street, um, they can sometimes have you know two effects. And so initially, some of these drugs, such as, as cannabis and marijuana, they can make patients feel a bit sleepy and a bit drowsy. Um, whereas on the other hand, the um, things like the stimulant drugs, like amphetamines and cocaine, etc., these medications might make you feel alert, especially initially, but if you take these drugs on a, for a sustained period of time, then the obviously it's only natural that if you're staying awake for you know so many hours, at some point when you stop taking that drug, then you're going to have a crash, and so you effectively stay at a peak like this, and then you all of a sudden dip really, really sharply, and so you then in that period or in that phase, sleep comes on really strongly, and so. Yes, they, these drugs might be stimulants, but they can also have an impact on your sleep in a long term uh, sense. So it's very important that people who are using these kinds of medications and often patients who have pain use cannabis based products as well. So it's very important that you check this with your healthcare professional uh, and discuss this with them on whether it's safe for you to um, continue taking these or not. So on that note, I'd like to conclude and I hope you enjoyed this uh, video and hopefully um, the rest of our team will be putting together some further resources for you around sleep and medication uh, and also will provide you with some further references that you can read uh, and that you can look into. And of course, as usual, if you have any further um, things that you want to discuss with us, then please do not hesitate to get in contact with us. Thank you.